What's up, world? It's your girl, BK Medina. And I'm chilling with my girl, Brooklyn Ty. But what's the word podcast? Check it out. Hey, it's Brooklyn Ty. And you're tuned into my podcast. What's the word? Thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time, where the hell have you been? Anyway, you're here now. So thank you for tuning in. Be sure to catch up and check out my previous podcasts that are available, as well as my blogs that are available on my website, Brooklyn Tie NYC. And that's www.bklynytienyc.com. Subscribe to my newsletter so you'll be informed every time a blog and a podcast drops, as well as I'm going to try to stay consistent this year with keeping you in tune with like a lot of black owned businesses and brands that you should be checking out and shopping from, as well as just events and things that are going on possibly in your area. So I'm going to add those to my newsletters as well, but I will not flood you every time, you know, something comes up. So I will try to keep it consistent with like maybe once a month, no more than twice a month, unless it's something really, really going on that I think I need to let y'all know about. So I don't know. I'm already like long winded because it's so much to cover. I don't even I don't really even know when where to start. So, you know, it's been a minute since my last podcast. So like happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy New Year's, happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day, happy Black History Month and happy Valentine's Day. Heesh. I think that covers it all. But actually, before we get started, I'd like to first um, take a moment to send condolences to the family and friends of my childhood homie, Ethan Rivera. He was killed last weekend um, in North Carolina while he was on the job. So I would like to have you all keep his kids and his mom, especially in your prayers. I'll also include a link to a GoFundMe account that's been set up for him. Um, Yeah, it's just tragic. Like, the way people have been losing their lives from, like, murder, suicide, like, in the last few weeks alone have been at an all-time high. Like, I mean, you know, yes, people die every day, but, like, it's been ridiculous. Um, And we're only a month and a half in, basically. It's only today I'm recording... It is February 18th, Friday. So, yeah, it's been a lot going on. So, again, keep him and his family in your prayers. And (sighs) let's get started. So, I figured I'd start it off with... Ties topics, shall we? <laughs> the Super Bowl just took place last week on February 13th, which was a Dr. Dre celebration. And it was a very dope situation that took place. Um, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, and Eminem, who also brought out Anderson Park, which <laughs> I love Anderson. Um Mary J. Blige performed Family Affair and No Drama, and I was damn near in my house dancing, doing a Mary doing a Mary dance, and just cheering her on and just taking on taking in the entire situation because black people have come so far to now actually be like the entire halftime of the Super Bowl. And like you would have to know how far we've come in music, how far Dre has come from like the type of music that he was putting out back in the days. And I mean, like, yeah, so far, so far, it was a very dope performance. So if you missed it, you can definitely check the um, video out, the full halftime on YouTube somewhere, Instagram, Facebook, I'm sure search Super Bowl 2022, and I'm sure it'll come up. Um, but again, like Mary J. Blige was amazing. She looked amazing as as per usual, because when does she not look good? Um, even when Eminem performed, the talk now is that, you know, he he kneeled and 
Uh, I haven't really seen a lot of controversy behind it, but, you know, the kneeling was like, you know, a uh, strike in the face to the NFL, who actually did tell him not to kneel, but, you know, you can't tell Eminem not to do something and think he's not going to do it. So, you know, the performance was amazing. 50 Cent, they started talking about his weight gain and like, you know, I mean, we just have too much time on our hands to be talking about things that are really irrelevant, surrounded by blackness, black greatness. And we are in Black History Month. But then at the same time, it's 50 Cent. <laughs> 50 Cent is someone who's always going after somebody, always has jokes, always trying to come up by putting somebody down. So, you know, it's kind of like ha ha ha. But I mean, we, it's, it's, there's a time and place for everything. So moving along from that, Rihanna and ASAP Rocky are expecting a baby. I'm not sure what month the baby is due, but I am happy for them. You know, in the midst of Black History Month news, that's good. You know, a new life coming into the world with coming into the world, two parents who hopefully will build a foundation, stay together. But, you know, with them being two different, you know, two celebrities, most times celebrity relationships don't really last that long. But, you know, I'm hopeful for them. And speaking on kids and babies and such, if you're into reading with your kids or if they're bookworms like I was when I was a kid, I'm still a bookworm. Next Saturday, February 26th in Philly is the 30th anniversary um, or the 30th annual African-American Children's Book Fair that's happening. I'll be there. It's going to be happening at the Pennsylvania Convention Center, 1 to 4 p.m. So meet me there. Thank me later. Check check me there. Um, it's going to be a very good event. Hopefully the weather will be nice. It's easy to get to from the city. If you're someone who doesn't mind taking a bus, um, there is a bus that'll get you there in about 90 minutes from East Broadway or like surrounding areas of Chinatown, or you can drive. It's like a quick ride through the tunnel, through Jersey, like, you know. So check that out because I think that'll be something that will be fun. Hopefully, like I said, the weather will be nice. But either way, I'm out there. I'm outside. <laughs> and I guess that's really all the tied topics that I have for right now regarding just like, you know, random things, situations that went on. So let's actually get into my magazine reads for February. And this is something I'm going to try to do every month on my podcast because it's, it is something that I do post every month for my followers on Instagram, where I just basically give you an idea of magazines to pick up that are the magazines that I think you should be aware of for that particular month. So for the month of February, our black people are looking very good and delicious and all in our melanin. So let's start with Essence Magazine, their digital copy for February, because they do have a physical copy. Um, the physical copy for February has Pinky Cole and Derek Hayes. Um, they're like straight up black millionaires that came from the bottom to the top, basically. So make sure you pick up a copy of that. But Essence Digital Magazine for February, they have Method Man, Takao himself, and Lord, does he look amazing. The photo shoot was done to perfection. And I just think that seeing him in a different light, because any interview I've seen of Method Man has always been music-related, Wu-Tang-related, um, you know, so Essence actually had conversations with him discussing on like him feeling, him mentioning not feeling like he was enough. And we never think about men or success, successful men, especially feeling this way. 
You know, we see black men, they're supposed to always be strong or, you know, we label them as strong black men. And that doesn't give them a real chance to be their full self because every time they're being watched or they're being seen, they're expected to be strong black men. But he does mention, and I quote, understand I was a black boy living in some of the worst areas in New York. I've always felt like I wasn't enough. I've always been told that from the gate. You don't belong here. Sometimes even without words, end quote. So I think like he really expressed a lot of things that men go through, men feel, but they never really get a chance to express. So I think men, especially y'all should pick up or y'all should just basically go to essence.com, check out Method Man's article. He does get into a little bit of his music career, but you know, he's a family man. He's been married for to his wife like forever. So you know, pick that up, check that out. And getting back on Mary J. Blige, the queen of hip-hop soul herself, she's actually on this month's Elle magazine cover, and they have a good story um, on her where basically she just speaks about how she had to come, you know, adapt and come to her own. She says, and I quote, when you have a single mother With two little girls living in the hood, you develop tomboy skills. You become the guys you're hanging with, but I'm still a girl. So that was, you know, that part especially was very relatable to me because I grew up as a tomboy. I hung out with all of my, like, you know, a lot of guys because I was the only child for a long time before my sisters came along and it was nothing but boys in my neighborhood growing up. So, you know, that was fine. But when she came out, she had a style that was like tomboy slash sexy. Like you could still be in your Tims, but you could still have shorts with some tights on and a nice top, some shades, your hair in a dope ass style. Like she was, she was the shit. So we're like, we evolved from, Like my, at the time, me being like 15, 16, where like my aunts that were older than me were copying Salt and Pepper, Queen Latifah, you know, Mary J. Blige came around and it was like, oh, she can be like the representative of the girls my age. So she's always been dope to me. If you have been following my blogs, you know, I have a a blog on her, you know, like (laughs) celebrate her birthday Every year, just by like honoring her and like posts, like picture after picture. Um, she's also going to be at the Roots picnic June 4th to the 5th. I'm not sure on which day she's going to be there performing, but she's going to be there. She's one of the headliners. So, you know, as it gets closer, I'll be bringing you more information on the Roots picnic because, of course, I will be there. And another idol of mine, Miss Janet Jackson herself, who also has a documentary on um, A&E. You can, you, I seen it, you know, I watched it on A&E. I think it was also on Lifetime as well, but A&E has a two-part document that they um, did on Janet Jackson. So that is like a very, if you, you know, she's very private and always been personal about her family and you know so if you want to learn a little bit more and see how she opened up a little bit more there's like you know she just was in in style magazine recently a few months back um and now she's in this month for february 2022 she's in the allure magazine also looking marvelous amazing beautiful and to me this interview is more so on a personal level of her where she's basically like, you know, showing like her everyday um, moments being captured. Like, you know, they go, they discuss more so about, you know, how there was a situation where she seen an old teacher of her, her bae, of her son. And like, she stopped traffic just to like wave the old teacher down to say hi. 
And you know, that's something like in 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 a in the opposite world, like we would do that to her. We would see her and we would like stop traffic just to get her attention, just to say hi to her because she is the celebrity. But she's in London. She's been living there about six years now. She speaks on about like, you know, loves driving, which to me I can't picture Janet Jackson driving, and I really don't know why. I just never see her. I can't, her, Michael, like none of them. I just always picture them being driven around anywhere they needed to go. So, you know, again, that's the Law Magazine. You could pick that up. Um, And Angela Bassett looking like a badass. Oh, and y'all know I love me some Angela Bassett. But she's on, um, she's inside, not on the cover, but she's inside. They'd have... A spread article, few pages on Angela Bassett on InStyle Magazine for February 2022. So you can check that out as well. And I think that covers, let me see, I think that covers my magazine reads. So also as a sidebar, one of the books that I'm reading is from Tracy Mommy. Um, It's called You Had Me Fooled. Tracy Mommy is someone who and you can follow her at author Tracy, and that's author T R A C I E M O M I E on Instagram. Um, just someone that I randomly met online who did a January book club challenge, which I enjoyed. I did like maybe the first week or so. Um, it was kind of hard to keep up. So I didn't do it too long, but it was fun, something fun to do. So, you know, follow her, check her out. This book is amazing. It's like it had me mentally all over the place because it's about two people coming together and their spouse's deaths. Their each individual spouse died in the same location and like how that all comes together. But was it a crime that was... Or actually, was it a crime or was it an accident? Basically, that's like the spin on it. So check that out. Um, I'll have that in the newsletter as well. And then I just purchased Dilla, J. Dilla's book. I haven't gotten into it yet, but I'll keep y'all in tune with that. So stay tuned. Next, let's get into what I'm watching. So, as you guys know, I really don't watch TV. So, basically, everything I get to watch, I watch on apps. So, my current frequent apps is HBO, Hulu, Netflix. I just ended my subscription to Amazon Prime because they haven't really had anything worth watching right now. I guess at least until Harlem comes back on. And so, yeah, I don't really watch any other apps at the moment. However, I did make an exception to download Lifetime, which usually never has black dramas, but I guess in honor of Black History Month, they hooked us up and gave us one. (laughs) So if you are familiar with Single White Female, they came out with a black version, which is Single Black Female, Starring Raven Goodwin, she plays Monica, Amber Riley, who plays Simone, and K. Michelle. And can I just say, K. Michelle did her thing. She was more so like herself because she was like Monica's, um, which uh, Raven Goodwin plays Monica, one of the stars. She plays as like her best friend, like her take no shorts, the person you call when you got beef, best friend. She she played her position. She played that part real good. But it's basically like, you know, um, Amber Riley, who plays Simone, is like a stalker crazy girl who stalks Monica by like trying to get her whole life down, packed, getting a job where she works, actually moving next door to her, like on some crazy psycho shit. And then come to find out, in the end, like that's her sister. So kind of like watch it. And I would probably recommend you watch single white female. I'll actually, I don't even, it really doesn't matter which order you can watch either one first, but I would recommend you watch both versions just to see 
to get an idea of the differences and similarities of the movie, but both were very good movies. Um, you know, so that's why I'm mentioning it now. Also, I'm watching Ozark. <laughs> and if y'all have not caught up on Ozark, you are missing out on a lot. The birds are a very interesting type of family. <laughs> and I will be honest, when I was first put onto it, I watched the first episode. I didn't even really get through the first 30 minutes, but I may have been distracted at, at the time because this time around, somebody mentioned it and they were going off on how like this season is like, it's like a it's season four, but part one and just being on Twitter and it trending. And I was like, you know what? I might have to take my time and binge watch four seasons. Each season is, is I believe, I want to say like 10, either eight to 10 episodes. So I last week, literally every day, binge, like I just watched, watch, watch until I finished the other day. And now I can't wait for the second part. People died that I was like, oh, no, they're not going to kill him. Oh, no, no, they're not going to. Oh, no, they're going to be around. No, like this shit is like so dope. So it's basically a family money laundering. They, they have to move from Chicago to Ozark and they buy all of these businesses from funeral homes to casinos to getting into drugs like it's a lot going on, but it is a dope series to um, tap into if you're interested in that type of thing. And then if we're speaking on terms of like drugs, Euphoria, Zendaya, I wasn't into watching this the first season. Definitely wasn't into it. Um, last week or maybe two weekends ago when she had like that killer star, like star studded Grammy nominated or um, Academy Award nominated. Like she was trending. Like they, they were speaking on this performance on how good it was. And like, she was amazing. It was trending on Twitter. Everybody was talking about it on Instagram. And so of course, with that being said, I was like, okay, let me, let me tap into these teenage drug addicts, sex addicts and whatever the messy things that I've heard about euphoria, which didn't interest me enough to watch. Oh my God. So yeah, y'all need to get into it. Euphoria is very good. Yeah, I actually learned a bit more extra things and it's something that I think parents should tap into, sit and watch with your kids. Maybe depending on the age and their maturity, but it is something like real serious when it comes to Rose, um, Rue's um, character, which is played by Zendaya. Um, I've never been on drugs. I don't have kids that have been on drugs or like I, I would say like hard shooting up crack, heroin, like all of that kind of stuff because like do really do people really do those things still I don't know but well even like pills and all of those kind of things I haven't had that direct kind of experience but it would have it would it would really tear me up as a parent to go through something like that so it is mind blowing and it is a lot to watch and help bring up a conversation with your kids. So check into that. I'm also watching. Get, oh, I'm sorry. And Ozark is on Netflix. So single black females is on Lifetime. Ozark is on Netflix. Um, Gilded Age is on HBO. And when I tell you this show. Is played like these these actors and actresses, they, they're playing the hell out of these parts. And then we have, and it's basically a white cast. However, we have Danae Benton, who's a Tony Award nominated actress, Broadway star. Like she's been in a few different mu musicals on Broadway and like her career is amazing. I recommend y'all watching <laughs> this series. Um, they actually do have Gilded Age 
homes in New York City, Fifth Avenue. So I did actually look up. I wanted to read this to you guys to give you a better idea of what Gilded Age is. But the American Gilded Age was a period of immense economic change, great conflict between the old ways and brand new systems. The huge fortunes were made and lost. In 1882, young Marion Brooke moves from rural rural Pennsylvania to New York City after the death of her father to live with her aunts Agnes and Van and Ada Brooke, accompanied by Peggy Scott. Peggy Scott is played by the black actress Danae Benton that I just mentioned. An inspired, an inspiring writer seeking a fresh start. So it's like, even, even with, with her wanting to be a writer at the time, you know, being a black woman trying to move on and make your own money, following a career that didn't, that had nothing to do with like being a house, a housemaid or, you know, that along those lines of work for a black woman in general. You know, that, that says a lot. And again, this tap, this takes place in like the, the late 1800s, early 1900s. So like y'all just check it out for yourself, get an idea of what's going on. I do plan on going to the Gilded Age homes that they have available. I believe they do tours in the city. I'll find out about that and look more into it in the future. And I'll keep y'all posted. I'll possibly do a blog if I get an opportunity for that. And I guess I wanted to talk about Abbott Elementary, but first, let me, can we just speak on the cast of the musical film of The Color Purple that's being released December of 2023? <laughs> like, I cannot wait for... That's just going to be something awesome. And speaking on that, um, they have Coleman Domingo. He is going to be in the musical film version of the color purple. He's actually, he plays on euphoria as one of the drug counselors and like one of Rue's, I guess she, he's adapting to becoming like one of her mentors or like best friends. Um, very amazing actor. They also have, um, Daniel Brooks. Congrats to her. She just got engaged, but she was also in the play on Broadway of the color purple, but she's in the movie. Halle Bailey, um, her is in this as well. Fantasia, Taraji, P. Henson. Like it's going to be star studded. It's going to be a dope ass movie. I can't wait to check that out. So stay tuned for that. Again, that's not going to be released until December of 2023 because of course it's going to be like a lot of time to kind of like put it all together. And, you know, it's, it's, I could only imagine how much is going to have to go into putting this film together, especially still because we're in COVID time. So, you know, I'm sure they still have distance restrictions and things like that and COVID tests and shots. And like, it's just such a different wave of how we put movies and shows and things together. So just look out for that. That's going to be great. And I want to, I wanted to save Abbott Elementary <laughs> for last on my w- things that I'm watching. I'm not a hundred percent sure off the top of my head right now what network it comes on, but I watch it on Hulu. So Abbott Elementary, thanks to Quinta Brunson. Oh my God. Who is the creator? She is a funny actress, amazing woman. And she actually named this show from her sixth grade teacher. Miss Abbott. So I think that's kind of dope too. It's something about sixth grade teachers, I swear. But Abbott Elementary, if you're not watching it, it stars also Tyler James Williams. He's in, he's the one who was Chris and everybody hates Chris. We have Cheryl Lee Ralph, who's a legend, Broadway legend, actress, singer, everything. Um, Janelle James, who is on a Netflix comedy special, actually, the stand-ups. She's funny. I watched the comedy. She's 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 hilarious on the show. She plays the principal. And um, <laughs> yeah, like y'all really have to take time to check Abbott Elementary out because it's 
one of those shows that will keep you laughing, make you wish you had more than an hour of watching this show because I think it's like only 30 minutes or so. You get a teacher's point of view of how it is behind the scenes as, you know, teachers deal with students on a daily basis and the things that they go through in like the teacher's conference room. So I know like a lot of teachers, especially my daughter, who's also a teacher, um, they love it because it's so relatable for them. Um, and just like the, the random comedy things that go on with this show, it's like so dope. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it is about sixth grade teachers, but I can only assume that it's because, you know, at the age of 12, 13, when you're going from fifth grade to sixth grade. Now, for me, back in the day, fifth grade, we graduated and then we started we started junior high school um, in the sixth grade. I do know now some schools go from pre-K all the way to eighth grade. So with that in mind, it's still something about sixth grade teachers that make us like even as a parent. So my daughter's my oldest daughter, um, Miracle, her sixth grade teacher, Miss Pope, has been in our lives for it seems like forever now because my granddaughter is about to be 10 this year. Um, and so from sixth grade all through high school, all through her life, even now, she's been in my daughter's life. Just someone I could always reach out to in a time of need, because let me tell you, Miracle went to the school in Virginia and Virginia schooling and New York schooling are two different levels. So she would have these days where they would have like a two hour delay, but I had to be at work and my job was not trying to hear, oh, um, I can't make it because I got to wait for my daughter to get on the school bus and all of this and all of that. They wasn't having that, especially when in Virginia, it's a almost weekly situation. So there will be times I would have to ask Miss Pope like, hey, um, so I got to get to work. And like she wouldn't mind me dropping Miracle off earlier than normal at school sitting with her helping out or whatever but from then on they had their own relationship and to this day um I think I mentioned Miss Pope is now my granddaughter's godmother and she's like the best mother the best wife the best friend the best sister the best daughter like she's everything and I've just been blessed to have her because even when my daughter told me she was pregnant, I had to call Miss Pope just to like talk me off the ledge to make it make sense. I didn't have friends that I could really like go to and speak to and get like an honest opinion on what I should do or how I should handle it, how I should feel. And um, yeah, Miss Pope really got me through it. And she's she hasn't left outside ever since. So on terms of that, we have also Miss Buddington who is a phenomenal, <laughs> when I tell you, she's like going to be my lifelong history teacher. Like for all of our blackness, all of my blackness, she is amazing. So Heaven, my youngest daughter, she was Heaven's sixth grade teacher. Heaven is now in 10th grade, but she is amazing. And not for nothing, because it's Black History Month, if you want to get your daily dose of Black history all year long, not only for this month, but like every day, all day, y'all have to follow Miss Buddington. So she's at, um, at Erica Buddington, and that's E-R-I-C-A-B-U-D-D-I-N-G-T-O-N on Instagram and Twitter. She is... The amount of black history that she has in her brain, I mean, I I I, I don't even I, I couldn't even sleep at night with all of that knowledge and all of that information and all of the hurt and the pain and the struggles and like everything that we've endured. And when she is does not know about something or something is brought to her attention, she will go out and research and hit the pavement and be out in these streets. 
traveling, not necessarily only in New York. She'll go to Maryland. She'll go to Florida. She'll go. I mean, just follow her. Just follow her. I promise you. Um, if you have or are familiar with the Amber Ruffin show, she's a writer. Um, that show starts back up February 25th on Peacock. So I'm excited to watch more episodes of that show. But yeah, definitely check her out. So I love that I have had the experience. I think we all, if we haven't personally had a teacher in the sixth grade that touched us as a parent, you have had a sixth grade teacher that has touched your child's life. And if you haven't, I am so sorry for you. If you look at a lot of celebrities or listen to a lot of celebrities who speak about their upbringing in school, you will always more times than not hear them mention their sixth grade teacher. Something about that. I might have to do a research or blog on on that on like why is that? But yeah, Abbott Elementary, please watch. Get your life. And that's basically what I'm watching. So I guess that's all I have. I mean, I do have a few mentions that I wanted to bring to your attention because if you are friends with me or you've known me for some time, whether from like social media or just personally, y'all know June is my birthday, June 22nd. June typically pre-COVID from June 1st my birthday celebration starts. So like it always started at the roots picnic in Philly and COVID didn't allow that to happen the last few years, but their bike, they are bike, bike, bike two day event. Tickets are now on sale. Lineup is released and it's dope. I think I mentioned earlier, Mary J. Blige will be there performing with the roots. Summer Walker, we have WizKid, Jasmine Sullivan, Black Thought, Rick Ross, Benny the Butcher, Keisha Cole, SWV, Music Soul Child, Kirk Franklin, like Tara Wack, DJ Jazzy Jeff, Rakim, like freaking Jamil Hill Unbothered Podcast, who I love. I'm meeting her. I'm taking a picture. She will know me. She will. I think I might bring, I think I might wear her shirt that day too, picture purposes, but I love, I love her. So it's a two day event. Prices, tickets are very pricey, but it is worth it. I'll be out there. I'll probably get an Airbnb or I might stay at a friend's house. Who knows? But my homeboy DJ Active and as well as DJ Diamond Cuts will be on the ones and twos. And this is happening again June 4th and June 5th at the main at Fairmont Park. So check that out. Follow Roots Picnic and get all of the information. Tickets are on sale, I believe, Ticketmaster or like Live Nation. It'll link you to where you need to be to get tickets. So check that out. Um, also, don't forget next Saturday, February 26, 2022 in Philly. It's something about me in Philly. I love Philly. Philly is like a jump over. And even though like Jersey comes first, Philly is just always like a dope place to be like having fun shit to do all the time. Philly cheesesteak, all of that. I go, I go out and do all of that. South Road, all of that. Anyway, but um, Philly, next Saturday, the 30th annual African-American Children's Book Fair from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Pennsylvania Convention Center. I'm sorry. So, again, meet me there. Thank me later because I will be there. And so that's really all I got today on this episode, episode six. I'm a, I think I'm going to title this New Year, Say Me, because, you know, say me. Different year, ain't shit changed. Still crazy, still talking a lot. Shout out to Smiles, who is my editor and producer for this podcast. I appreciate you. Also, be sure to check out my website again, www.brooklyntie.com. 
BKLYNTYE.com. And that's BKLYNTYE.com. Catch up on my previous podcast, my previous blogs, and interact with me on Instagram and Twitter, which is at BKLYNTYENYC. See what I have going on, see what I have um, coming up, what I've been doing. And if you are a black owned business or know a black owned business or brand or anyone that has some dope shit popping off, hit me up either on my DMs on Instagram or Twitter, or you can always send me an email. And the email is going to be the podcast, what's the word at gmail.com. Or you can always hit me up by tagging me in that brand or business's page and I'll definitely check into them and see what they're about or see what you're about. So keep me posted with that and be sure to check out my shop website, which is basically Brooklyn Tide NYC forward slash shop or just pull down the option on my website, brooklyntynyc.com and shop my merch, support the cause. I have merch for my podcast. I have merch for my Brooklyn natives or those that want to represent Brooklyn. I have merch for my hip hop heads. So I have like hoodies, double-sided tote bags, snapbacks, mugs, pins, buttons, stickers, like you name it, I got it. So again, check that out, www.brooklyntynyc.com, B-K-L-Y-N-T-Y-E-N-Y-C.com. And spread love. It's the Brooklyn Tower.